Good afternoon, welcome to Manik IS, and we will discuss current affairs of 2nd April. First topic is 18th Wimstek Ministerial Minute Meeting in Colombo. Right. Why Wimstek is essential for India? First, we will discuss. After SARC, India, after the various terrorist attacks like Pulwama attack, Uri attack, and India decided to isolate Pakistan regionally, right? Sark in Sark, we have Pakistan. Uh, we have Pakistan is a member country. That's why India avoided Sark and we more focused on Bimstick, right? It's the same regional cooperation, uh, regional organization, but here there is no Pakistan. Okay. Recently, the Minister of External Affairs India participated in 18th Bimstick Ministerial meeting in Colombo that is in Sri Lanka, we have 18th ministerial meeting in Colombo. It emphasized the grouping's commitment intensify and expand areas of cooperation especially connectivity energy and maritime cooperation. Connectivity and energy in maritime cooperation, right. Cooperation on the port facilities, ferry services, coastal shipping, grid connectivity and motor vehicle a movement like we have Karadala multimodal project, we have BBN project, right? All these are working in Wimstek region. Development of port facilities, right? Mm, like Chitwe Puet of Myanmar, all these things. So, connectivity, energy, and maritime cooperation as well, that is providing maritime security. Then, what is Wimstek? Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi Sectoral techno, techno, Technical Economic Cooperation. Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi Sectoral Technical Economic Cooperation, Wimstek. Is a regional organization that was established in 1997. Remember, 1997 it is the time when Bimstek established with the signing of Bangkok Declaration. The declaration is Bangkok Declaration. These international bodies are very important. For prelims, for Bangkok Declaration established in 1997, Bimstek. Initially known as Bistek, right? Bistek that is Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand. Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand. Economic cooperation. The organization is now known as Wimstek uh, with seven member states with the admission of Myanmar in 1997. Myanmar included and, and Myanmar and Bhutan and Nepal. Nepal in 2004, Bhutan and Nepal joined in 2004, Myanmar joined in 1997 and it become Wimstek. The grouping hold annual meetings hosted member states based on alphabetical rotation. Sri Lanka is the host nation this time, right? So, 18th, 18th Wimstek Ministerial Conference happened in Sri Lanka in, Colum in Colombo, it is organized and Wimstek, it was established in 1997 and signed with Bangkok declaration, it is and Bhutan and Nepal joined in 2004, Myanmar joined in, joined in 1997, right. This time it was organized in Sri Lanka that is in Colombo. Next, focus sectors being a sector driven grouping cooperation within Wimstek had initially focused on six sectors 1997 that is trade, technology, energy, transport, tourism and fisheries. Initially there was trade, technology, energy, transport, tourism and fisheries expanded in 2008 to incorporate agriculture, public health, poverty elevation, counter terrorism, environment, culture, people durable contact and climate change. That means in every dimensions all these uh, Wimstek member countries will, will cooperate with each other. Right. Subsequently following the steps of rationalized and reorganized sectors, sub-sectors cooperation was reorganized in 2021 under the following sectors and sub-sectors led by respective member states. So, at present they are, they are cooperating in a wide range of services like counter terrorism, environment, energies, public health care, poverty elevation, agriculture, fisheries, climate change, people to be able to contact, exchange of culture. So, in this every manner all the Wimstek countries they are cooperating with each other. So, what are the sectors where both all the uh, all the countries are cooperating? What is the purpose of Wimstek? To create an enabling environment for rapid economic development. How rapid economic development can be possible? By reducing the trade barriers, by reducing the trade barriers that will increase the regional trade. The advantage of regional trade is that you, do, you do not need any, there is no hurdle of transport system, right. 
there is no hurdle of transport system you can easily trade with the nearby countries that it has two effects first thing is that because of neighbor first policy you have to develop your good relationship with your, all your neighbors that is important for your security see china and india both are long term rivalry china is a very aggressive state still it cannot take a very strong action in against india why because there is a strong trade relationship that is around 100 billion dollar that is why china is not taking any strong action against india because it is trade will is going to hamper another thing is example is that the trade between us and china is so high although it is uh, i mean there are so many rivalry there are maybe possible of world uh, possibility of world war but they will they are not fighting why they are not fighting because there is economic interest if war happens then both the country will suffer that is mutual mutually assured assured suffering we can say so two countries if they have strong economic relationship they will never fight so so for a security of every each country is con also concerned economy trade economy relationship or trade relations which is also very important so in that scenario in that uh, uh, so that is why rapid economic development is essential for both for security regions and also for economic development between the bimstek countries implementation of specific co corporation projects and already agreed areas of cooperation such areas may be agreed upon by the member states that means for example india is developing hydropower in nepal right india is developing hydropower in nepal so both countries agreed and that corporation developed both will generate the hydro energy india has so in india can invest there there is potential in nepal india has the money it's a big economic power it will help uh, it will, that so creation of hydropower will reduce the energy crisis of nepal as well as india will also get benefited right to accelerate the economic growth and social progress in the bay of bengal region through joint endeavor spirit of equality and partnership social progress in the bay of bengal economic economic region it is it is bay of bengal is uh, even linked to our um, indian ocean so and around 75% of world trade passes through indian ocean so it's a, uh, so it's a very i mean uh, it's a we can say that this indo pacific region is becoming the most important uh, region so far as world economy is concerned and strategic uh, strategic uh, strategic so far strategic point of view also indo pacific is now the most important area in world politics that's why all the countries like us or your australian countries they are focusing on indo specific and we have established quad relationship right quadrilateral group to promote that is why usa japan australia and india to promote active collaboration and mutual assistance on the matters of common interest on matters of matters of common interest what do you mean by matters of common interest for example where both are interested both are interested they can take the stance suppose nepal wants that its hydropower need to be developed then net nepal will cooperate and india will cooperate but so wherever the common interest lies for is mutual beneficial then they can they can assist each other right in economic technical social technical uh, technical and scientific fields technical and scientific fields we have to for example i am um, giving suppose china has so much money so obviously china has so much money wherever we are investing 100 rupees china is investing 300 rupees so obviously because of economic diplomacy um, uh, any country will be tilted towards china but we do not have that much of money to give equal into china but what we can do we can give some developed technology if we have whatever developed technology if you have we have we can share with our member states right technologically we can, we can help them by some practices governance practices we can help them in scientific fields in social fields we can include the foreign i mean we can um, we can uh, facilitate uh, the uh, those students to study in india as well so the social cooperation scientific cooperation they, that may also be done although we are not able to give that much of money to uh, that much of money to uh, to all these member countries like china but we can develop we can transfer our technology we can help in social sphere we can help in educational sphere or in health sphere right india is a, it has become a hub of medical tourism medical tourism means we can provide high uh, i mean uh, we can provide high quality of healthcare with less price so in this all this um, sectors india can help those countries the small countries like bangladesh myanmar bhutan nepal all these countries and right at the same time we can isolate 
Pakistan as well. Next, to provide assistance to each other in the form of training and research facilities in the educational, professional and technical spheres. Assistance in training, research facilities, training, research facilities, educational, professional and technical spheres. Right? For example, technical spheres, for example, we have De we have developed a coin portal. By, by coin portal, we have, uh, we have conducting large number of vaccinations. Suppose that technology do not have, Bangladesh do not have the te technology. We can share the technology with Bangladesh and both can be developed, right? The cooperation is more effectively in joint efforts than supportive of and complementary to national development plans of the member states, which result in tangible benefits to the people in raising their living standard, including their generating employment and improving transportation and communication infrastructure. How both countries can be benefited by because of these groupings? How both countries will be benefited? Suppose, suppose Bangladesh, it has advantages so far as, uh, so far as sugar cane cultivation is concerned. In India has advantage so far as rice cultivation is concerned. So, Bangladesh will not impose tax on Indian rice, so that in uh, Bangladesh people will get Indian rice at low price. Right. Similarly, on the, on the contrary, India can reduce the taxes on sugar cane and we can, uh, or cotton for example, reduce the tax on cotton that is coming from Bangladesh and Indian people will enjoy cotton with less price. Right. This may also happen. Right. This is how they can cooperate. Uh, two countries can cooperate with each other and both the people of the two countries can, can be developed. And see another example is that. If you are, when prices get reduced, for example, if, if in 1000 one money you are buying one shirt and with that 1000 money you are buying two shirts, when price reduce, what will happen? What is the benefit in this? In this making, making of two shirts, it required around, it creates the demand by twice, right? So when price reduced, twice, demand becomes twice, when demand becomes twice, that creates employment, right? So when price reduce, the employment generation automatically happens and both country get the benefits. India and Mimstek. Mimstek connects South and Southeast Asia and also ecologies of Great Himalayas and the Bay of Bengal. Bimstek has a special significance for India in a changing mental map of the region. India has made way of Bengal integral to India's neighborhood fast and activist policy. Integral to India's neighborhood fast and activist policy, right? Because it connects Bangladesh, it connects Myanmar. So it is a, it is way of, this is integral to India's activist policy and neighborhood fast policy. And from neighborhood, we always want to isolate Pakistan, right? That's why. In Bimstek, there is no Pakistan, so it is the ideal and suitable sphere. India has made then, Bimstek has huge potential as a natural platform for development of cooperation of rapidly changing geopolitical calculus and can leverage its unique position as a pivot to the Indo-Pacific region. It is very important so far as Indo-Pacific region is concerned, so Bimstek has strategic importance. India has implemented its promise to set up a center for Bay of Bengal studies, CBS. Center for Bay of Bengal Studies CBS in Nalanda University, Bihar for research, art, culture and other subject related to Bay of Bengal. So India is promising uh, to the member countries for Center for Bay of Bengal Studies that is CBS in Bihar that is in Nalanda University. So it is an additional advantage. Next. The quest for economic growth and the development for the Bimstek region can be achieved with single minded focus and cooperation among the member countries. One most important thing is for any organization that is single minded focus and cooperation. See if you compare if you will compare the Asian organization and SARC there is a huge difference. If you compare European Union and SARC there is a huge difference. So for SARC is concerned there is too much rivalry between the countries. So for but Asian is a country they are they have a one motto and they are very it is regarded as a very successful organization. But so far as SARC is concerned, it is not a successful organization because there is no like-mindedness. Pakistan is not cooperating. Pakistan is again and again, Pakistan is resorted to terrorism. So there is that organization SARC is not successful. So here, here we have to analyze if there is an organization like Asian or European is successful, 
Why? Because they have one motto, they have one objective. So that is single minded focus, right? So for economic development of the region, BIMSTEC region, we can uh, single minded focus and cooperation among the nations, uh, uh, cooperation among the nations is highly essential. In this endeavor, India has a key role in accelerating regional cooperation under the BIMSTEC framework in making it vibrant, stronger and result oriented. So India as a biggest country among all these things, all these small country, India has a responsibility to making vibrant, stronger and result oriented. We have to take the leadership, India has to take the leadership and, and, make, and make a successful organization, right? So it's whether it will be a successful organization or not, all these things depends on India as, as it is the most biggest power and major country. Next, next what are the challenges we will see, what are the challenges? Okay, persisting organ, uh, organizational weakness, there is organizational weakness, right, what is organizational weakness? Inconsistent level in the commitment and general ambiguity regarding how to engage with each other in institutional actors have been key reasons of hampering the function of organization, persisting organizational weakness. Inconsistent commitment, what is inconsistent commitment? For example, we are developing a uh, connectivity, is a road, road connectivity in Bhutan, but their policy, their lifestyle is different, they want what the Bhutan people want. They want to, they want happiness index, they want to be the most happiest people in the world. They do not want uh, to uh, create environmental hazard. So that hampers the economic interest of BIMSTEC, one type of ideology, right, there is no like mindedness. Another thing is that poor connectivity and there is also big brother attitude. For example, they think that India is a big, uh, big brother, uh, I mean, um, there is a uh, tendency of such type of, uh, by the other countries that India is acting like a big, big brother or it is controlling it, that's why um, it's a negative, it is a negative value for the for any organization. Then poor, there should be similarity, right? It is, there is huge inequality happens. There is no comparison between Bhutan and India so far as power is concerned, right? But so far as Asian, Asian nation is con concerned, they are almost having equal, there is no such inequality, right? Next, poor connectivity. It is a troubled, uh, it is troubled by poor road and rail connectivity, in, insufficient last mile links, cumbersome customs and clearance procedures that hampers the trade. There is clearance procedures is they are not, com they are very cumbersome and or there is very complex. They have to simplify it. Each country, if con each country of the region have to simplify the uh, custom rules, right? They have to uh, re I mean reduce the customs and cl early clearance that need to be given so that and one of the most important things is connectivity need to be increased because of hilly terrain, because of various problems, connectivity for example India and Bangladesh, there is problem of connectivity. Why? Because of their north, north eastern states are very, I mean so much around Paul and hilly terrain that is why it is not easy, transportation is not easy. So transportation need to be developed. Lack of cohesion and coordination, cohesion among the members has been difficult to achieve many because of Rohingya refugee crisis which created bitterness between Myanmar and Bangladesh, Rohingya refugee crisis. It is also with India, right, because huge number of Rohingyas, lakhs of Rohingyas flee in 2017 around lakhs of Rohingyas flee to Bangladesh to save their life because, because the Myanmar military killed massacring uh, the, there is, uh, it conducted a genocide in, among the Rohingya Muslims. So overnight lakhs of Rohingya fled to the nearby country. To India also we have around 30,000 Rohingya Muslims and India is considering to return them back but there is no such region where to make them rehabilitated. Uh, it is saying that Rakhine region, they are, they are belongs to the special Rakhine region where um, uh, they are a minority in Myanmar and they are suffering by the military junta and also by the Buddhists. This affected the working of the organization to some extent as it could not develop common charter. China's financial hegemony. As China is undertaken a massive drive of finance and build infrastructure in South and Southeast Asia, so the Belt and Road Initiative, almost all the BIMSTEC countries except Bhutan and India are joining the Belt and Road Initiative. BIMSTEC is a new battleground in the India-China battle for dominance, right? 
China has created financial hegemony. It is investing huge amount of money, providing loans to all the member countries. For example, uh, for example, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka he taken, he has taken huge amount of money from. Uh, it's almost in debt trap. It has given hundreds of rupees from Mandota port to the uh, to China. So there is various issues. Uh, they are all those these small countries are falling into debt trap of China. There is a part of they are part of Belt and Road Initiative. In one hand, we have our diplomatic missions, we have the organizational organization ambition of BIMSTEC. On the other hand, there is China who is investing huge amount of money single handedly, right? Which has a huge economic power. So it has become a new battleground for India and China battle for dominance. Other issues. What are the other issues? The processing challenge. The processing challenges that confront the region include emergence of dead zone with zero oxygen. There is no fish survive. Leaching of plastic from various rivers, although Indian Ocean, destruction of natural protection against floods such as mangroves, air soil erosion, growing population, pressure, industrial growth of coastal uh, coastal areas, consequently huge quantities of waste flow. So far, this Bay of Bengal region is concerned. There is maritime pollution. That is a big issue. And conclusion, BIMSTEC might be a viable option for India to maintain its foreign policy discourse. However, India have to take into account the fact that Asia economics and politics have historically deeply integrated, not fall into the trap. Right, economics and politics are deeply integrated. We should not fall into trap to the of, of spending huge amount of money in the BIMSTEC on the guise of take, uh, uh, or taking the leadership. BIMSTEC could develop codes of conduct that preserve freedom of navigation and apply existing law of the seas regionally. Develop codes of conduct that preserve freedom of navigation and apply existing law of the seas regionally. Codes of conduct that preserve freedom of navigation, right? We can have a separate freedom of navigation and apply existing the seizure regionally. In addition, BIMSTEC could stem the regions of creeping militarization of institu uh, by instituting, for instance, Bay of Bengal zone of peace that seeks limit any bellicose behavior of external regional power. Right. Okay. So, for example, we have uh, well, fisherman issue with Sri Lanka. That is a common problem. Here we show we can have such a freedom of navigation we can have a course, a course of conduct freedom of navigation that can be implemented and also we have to stop militarization of the region. Militarization, if by small mistakes we should not militarize and should not arrest and should not put them behind bar. Instead, leaders should reinforce their commitments and efforts in building the momentum of collaborations in the Bay of Bengal region for the security and development. They reinforce their commitments. Commitments means if they are planning some implementation of a particular project, all the countries must uh, cooperate with each other to implement this for early implementations, right? They have to bring, they have to work uh, in uh, efficiently. Okay. Then BIMSTEC nations must also collectively combat terrorism, violent extremism, transnational crime, other cyber attacks like narco trafficking. In all these dimensions, BIMSTEC is cooperating. BIMSTEC summit must create new regional mechanism for coordinated activities on maritime issues of a transboundary nature. This mechanism must initiate urgent measures to strengthen fisheries management, promote sustainable fishing methods, establish protected areas, develop frameworks to prevent and manage pollution, especially industrial and agricultural waste and oil spills. So, so far as so far as environment is concerned, so far as energy is concerned, so far as uh, fisheries con is concerned, agriculture is concerned, there should be a mechanism to strengthen in all such dimensions. Next, there is also a need for greater scientific research and impact on climate change. Greater scientific research, right? Scientific research, if all the countries will invest in a particular project, for example, like we have established International Solar Alliance, similarly, we BIMSTEC they can have a common research center where everybody will invest and whatever result outcome everybody will share the people of each country will enjoy 
the research product of that particular research. So, there must be greater cooperation so far scientific research is concerned. Participatory approaches must be evolved near, near in real time stock assessment and creation of a regional open fisheries data alliance, open fisheries data alliance. So, research regarding fishery so that everybody will get the benefits. Okay, the Bay of Bengal program BOVP is an intergovernmental organization based on Chennai doing work to promote sustainable fishing. Bay of Bengal program BOVP sustainable fishing, sustainable fishing means that much of fishing should be done so that it do not hamper the productivity of the sea. A Bay of Bengal large maritime ecosystem BOB LME project also being launched by FAO food and agriculture organization uh, with finding from global environmental facility GEF. So, this is this is also established that is Bay of Bengal marine ecosystem to, uh, to secure the uh, ecosystem of Bengal, Bay of Bengal region right to reduce the maritime pollution. The Bimstack summit must express full support for BOBP and BO, BOB LME that is Bay of Bengal large maritime ecosystem. So, these both programs they must uh, Bimstacks must cooperate with them to strengthen to strengthen the implementation of uh, the projects regarding environment uh, that is challenging the environmental problems right or work, working against climate change and global warming. Next topic is Pradhan Mantri Sahaj Bijli Har Ghar Yojana that is Sobhagya Yojana right. Sobhagya Yojana what is this Sobhagya Yojana especially for electrifying individual households that is Sobhagya Yojana. Earlier what was happening? If a particular village, in a particular village is if 10 people, if 10 people get agree, if 10 people get agree that uh, sorry, if 10 people has taken the electric electricity facilities, then it was considered was 10 families, uh, it was considered electrified village, right. If 10 percent of people take the uh, facilities uh, or electricity connection, then it, it was considered as electric village. It was the earlier mode of electrifying a village. But Sobhagya scheme especially focuses on in providing electricity to individual households. It was, it was started in 2017, right. In certain areas, in small hilly pockets, Sobhagya scheme also reached there and provided electricity by solar powers and by other means, right. We will see what is solar, what is this uh, issue. Government of India has recently issued guidelines for electrification of any leftover on electrified households identified before 2013, 13, uh, 0, 0, 3, 2019 prior to Sobhagya Yojana for covering under the revamped distribution scheme that is RDSS, revamped distribution sector scheme. About Sobhagya scheme launched in 2017 with the objective to achieve an universal household electrification by providing electricity connection to all electric, all electrified households in rural areas and all poor households in urban areas in the country. So, Sobhagya scheme targets all rural households, rural, all rural households in and all rural households, urban areas in the country. It is one of the world's biggest electric, universal electrification initiatives with collaborative and concerted efforts of the center and in, in the states. It is a concurrent program to Deen Dal Upadhyaya Gram Yoti Yojana. Deen Dal Upadhyaya Gram Yoti Yojana it is a component of, it is a concurrent program of Deen Dwal Upadhyati Gram Jyoti Yojana DD, UG, JY and this is Sobhagya scheme that is providing individuals, households, electricity. Then Rural Electrification Corporation Limited, REC is the nodal agency for the operationalization of the scheme throughout the country. Rural Electrification Corporation, REC, this is the nodal agency to implement Sobhagya scheme throw out the country REC rural electrification organization remember this organization is very important because this time they have asked regarding the body that is managing the mudra scheme so so these corporates need to be remembered goal to achieve universal household electrification in the country by establishing last mile connectivity and delivering power to all on electrified rural families poor urban households Silent features, the silent features, the prospective beneficiary households for free connection would be identified using socio-economic cost census data. So, if a person is poor, 
belongs to BPL, BPL quality, BPL family is really poor, then he will be provided with the fees connection under Sobhagya schemes. Then household not found eligible as per AC data, AC data would also be provided electricity connections on a payment of 500 recoverable in the 10 installments through electricity bills. So, the initial uh, so initially government will help by 500 rupees that is essential to, to take the electricity connection and that will be recoverable in 10 installments from the from those families who are non BPL families. All discounts including private sector discounts, state power departments and uh, regional cooperatives societies eligible for financial assistance. So, any, anybody, anybody can provide their financial assistance that is the discounts, state power departments or cooperative societies. Dedicated web portal for, uh, for Sohagi has been developed to capture the information and progress household electrification. So, for monitoring Sohagi scheme, there is also a web portal for monitoring of Sohagi scheme. Progress under the scheme, as on 3 on 2019, around the all households reported or electrified by the states, except 18,730 households in left wing extremism affected areas of Satisgarh, right. In some L, LW extreme, left, left wing extremism areas. Subsequently, seven states namely Assam, Satisgarh, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Manipur, Asana, Uttar Pradesh reported that around 19.9 lakh unrelated households identified before, 19, before 2019, which are unwilling earlier, later have later expressed willingness to get electricity connections. So, in some states, in some, uh, some households, in Assam, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Karnataka, they agreed to take electricity connection. All the states in Indian territories have signed MOUs with central government to ensure 24 into 7 power supply to all households, industrial, commercial, consumers, adequate supply of power to agricultural consumers from 2019 April. 24 into 7 power supply. This was they have signed MOU with the central government memorandum of agreement upon. Then progress under the scheme. Okay, other similar activities. Din Dalopada Gram Jyoti Yojana, DD, EUG, JY, Ministry of Power, Ministry of Power, focus on uh, uh, what is under Ministry of Power, Din Dalopada Gram Jyoti Yojana, focus on strengthening augmentation of the existing infrastructure and metering existing distribution transformers into improve the quality and reliability of power supply in area, right. Then this Din Dayal Upadhyaya quality and continuous power supply in the area that is the objective. To provide electrification to all villages, it was the target, target was to all villages and not the, all the members, but so a scheme for all the individuals. Feeder preparation to ensure sufficient power to farmers and regular supply to other consumers. Improvement in sub transmission and distribution network to improve the quality and reliability of supply. Metering to reduce the losses. Metering, smart metering to reduce the losses because earlier it was, was, it was seen that in case of around, uh, there was around um, 40 percent of electricity was, was, uh, was lost because of leakage. By smart metering we can reduce that. Integrated Power Development Scheme IPDS, Ministry of Power Government of India notified IPDS on 3rd December 14 with following components, this tendering of soft transmission and distribution networks in the urban areas, tendering of soft transmission and distribution networks in the urban areas, right. The scheme was integrated power distribution scheme under Ministry of Power Government of India. Metering of distribution transmission feeders consumers urban areas so that there will be no loss, leakage will be prevented. Schemes for enterprise resource planning, enterprise resource planning and IT enabled balance, urban towns are also included under IPDS. The scope of IT enabled has been extended to 4041 4, 4, towards as per census 2011. All discounts will be eligible for financial assistance under the schemes. All discounts will be eligible for financial assistance under the scheme that is IPDS. The, because various state discounts they are suffering from huge financial crisis because of lack of proper management. They are already in debt. Restructured Accelerated Power Development and Reforms Program. 
R A P D R P. It was launched to focus the establishment of baseline data, fixation of accountability, fixation of accountability, reduction of eight uh, uh, eight and T losses up to fifteen percent, right? Transmission losses of fifteen percent. Level through strengthening of operation of substation distribution network and adoption of information technology in eleventh plan. In during the eleventh plan, right? To reduce the losses by right, up to fifteen percent. Then Ujjwal Discom uh, Assurance Yojana, the, the Ministry of Power, Government allows Udas Discom Assurance Yojana, that is Udas scheme, which approved Union Cabinet in 2015. The scheme envisages financial turnaround, turn around, operational and improvement, reduction of cost of generation of power, development of renewable energy, energy efficiency, and conservation. Energy efficiency, that means we have to make or manufacture such type of bulbs, electric bulbs, or fans, or electric appliances. Who are, which are energy efficiency so that we can serve huge amount of energy. We have to also develop smart metering rates that will improve the improve by operational um, operational improvement. So that what will happen by smart metering? If smart metering is there, then leakage will be reduced, right? Where the extra energy is used that can be identified under smart metering. Conclusion: While the set of objectives of the scheme have been achieved. Team Sovagya has continued to work in providing 24, 24 into 7 power supply to all. All the states have been requested to launch special campaigns in the respective to identify left out on electrified households and subsequently provide electricity connection to them. A dedicated toll free helpline has also been launched for that purpose. Right. So all the states are given the direction that if you are finding anybody who has who do not have house who do not have taken electricity connection, then they must be. In, from the, in the toll free health right, released by government of India so that Sovagya scheme can be implemented in those areas. Next topic is one horned rhino. Rhino population in Kajiranga National Park Assam has increased by 200. So rhino population in Kajiranga National Park, this is actually national park where uh, rhino population is highest in Assam, Kajiranga National Park that is 200, it increased by 200. The population was 2413 in 2018, it has increased 200 more that has become a biggest achievement of Assam wildlife so, uh, uh, for future Assam wildlife in the country. About Indian horned rhino, the greater one in the horned rhino or Indian rhino is largest of rhino species. It is largest of all the rhino species, one horned rhino are largest of all the rhino species. Then physical appearance, Indian rhinos are brownish grey in colour and hairless. Brown is grey, these are important for prelim facts. Brown is grey in colour and hairless. They have novi skin that occurs armor plated, a single horn sides uh, top and the snout and their upper lip in semi uh, prehensile, prehensile, prehensile. Right, upper lip is semi prehensile, Arm, uh, their, uh, they have novi skins that appears to be armor plated, single horn seats on the top of their snout. The greater one horned rhino is identified by single black horn about 8 to 25 inches long. They have a horn about 8 to 25 inches long, long and brown, grey brown hide with skin folds that gives armor protected appearance. So, the important thing is that it is the largest, India has the largest rhino species. It has increased in Assam in Kajiranga National Park and also the appearance of Indian rhino is that it is brown is grey in colour and are hairless. Right, horn are from 88 to 25 inches horn. Okay, next. The primarily, okay, here we will see. The primarily graze with, with diet consisting of almost entirely grasses always as well as leaves. Shrubs, trees, fruit and aquatic plants, so especially they are herbivorous. Habitat. The confirm uh, the confined to the tall grasslands and forest in the foothills of Himalayas. Tall grassland and foothills of Himalayas, they are their habitat is foothill Himalayas. The great one horned rhino is commonly found in Nepal, Bhutan, Pakistan, Assam, India. Nepal, Bhutan, Pakistan, Assam, India. Conservation status greater one horned rhinos vulnerable vulnerable by IUCN. Vulnerable by IUCN. Conservation reports by India, Ministry of Environment and Forest have launched national conservation strategy for Indian one horned rhino and conservation initiative of rhino has also enriched the grassland management which helps the reducing the negative impacts of climate change. 
the carbon sequestration. New Delhi Declaration on Asian Rhinos 2019 signed by India, Bhutan, Nepal, and Indonesia, Malaysia to conserve and protect the rhinos. New Delhi Declaration on, on Asian Rhinos. Right, Ministry of Environmental has launched National Green National Conservation Strategy. National Conservation Strategy for Indian one horned rhino. Right. So it has on, increased the grassland management. Grassland management that also helped in conservation of nature. So this is all about your one horned rhino. And another thing is that project to create DNA profiles and all the rhinos Ministry of uh, Forest and Climate Change. Let's see, there is a project. Indian Rhino Vision 2020. It is a unique program where, where the government partner international, national, and local organizations for the conservation of rhinos. Under it, Manas has received total 22 rhinos. Manas, Manas has received total 22 rhinos from 22 rhinos from other protected areas. The Indian Nepalese government, Nepalese governments have taken major steps toward Indian rhinoceros conservation with the help of World Wildlife Fund. World Wildlife Fund, Indian Nepalese government have taken major steps toward rhinos conservation. World Wildlife Fund, which is a funding mechanism, they are providing support for development for conservation of Indian rhinos. Annual Frontier Report 2022. The UNEP Annual Frontier Report 2022 was released recently. Annual Frontier Report. So it ranked 61 cities in total. In total, it ranked 61 cities in 2022, including 13 from South Asia, 10 from Europe, 10 from West Asia, 11 from East Asia, South East, Southeast Asia and Pacific, 7 from Africa, 6 from North America, and so it, uh, 4 from Latin America. It titled Noise Blazes and Mismatches. Noise Blazes and Mismatches. Key highlights of the report, Dhaka has been ranked as the noisiest city. Remember, Bangladesh that is the capital, Dhaka has ranked the noisiest city in the world, which is followed by Mordabad, Uttar Pradesh. Mordabad, Uttar Pradesh, it is the noisiest city of second. So, um, then, five Indian cities have been ranked in this list of among noisiest cities of the world. That is, Asanol, Jaipur, Kolkata, New Delhi and Mordabad. Asanol, Jaipur, Kolkata, New Delhi and Mordabad. Mordabad is in UP. It has ranked second so far as noisy city is concerned under annual frontier report of 2022. Annual front that is released by United Nations Environmental Program UNEP. Okay. What are the various to prevent from achieving Atman Nivarata Bharat in defense? What are the various impediments? which prevent India from achieving Atman River Bharat in defense. Suggest steps to overcome them and achieve strategic autonomy in key defense technologies. Right. Defense indigenization, uh, so indigenous, indige, indigenization, right. how to make our defense equipment from produced by indigenous technology. How can we make it? Defense indigenization, defense indigenization has Remain the inner calling of the nation, which has the third largest army, eighth largest military, eighth largest military, third largest army. It is talking about India. So we have to we have to we show how to develop self-sufficiency so far as defense sector is concerned. Right? Self-sufficiency. As we have the third largest army, eighth largest military spender. And ever the largest importer of weapon system, largest importer of weapon systems, platforms in the world, India inches are achieved to rightful strategic autonomy. Why? Because we have an objective to achieve rightful strategic autonomy that is in the Indian Ocean region. Strategic autonomy means we have to pursue our foreign policy in our own interest, not by the pressure of any developed countries. It needs to it needs to do much more in planting the seeds in com commercially viable and technologically robust, robust indigenous defense industrial base. According to Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, C3, 2019, India becomes third largest defense spender, spender of the world. In, in C3, according to India, has become third largest defense spender in the world. Why? Because India has an objective to provide maritime security in the in the 
Indian Ocean region and also to act as a regional flair and to increase its strategic autonomy. Then body challenges which prevent India from achieving Atmanirbhar in defense. Lack of defense manufacturing in India. Yes, we have lack of defense manufacturing. Why? Because DRDO, DRDO which is responsible for the making especially there is long delays, there, there is lack of manpower, there is lack of budgetary fundings, primarily driven by government ordnance factories and poor private participation. Private participation is poor, that's why this is, uh, we are not able to, uh, we are, the self sufficiency has not developed properly. The public sector by and far has enjoyed the preferred categorization, particularly for big ticket purposes when considering the Indian route despite poor track record as regards time and cost overruns, inefficiencies, poor financial performance, right? Despite poor financial performance, time cost overruns, right? It is a delay. Sometimes it delays more than 10 years in delivering project. And by that time, the project cost got multiples, multiple. That is what are the issues of public sectors. The defense industry per se being capital intensive industry with high risk in, in, of investments, and leaves few private players in the arena. The DPSUs, on the other hand, have not, not done to promote proficient business practices involving the industry, micro, small MSMEs. Right. The problem is that we have not promoted the MSME sector in the defense industry. So, we are focusing on capital investment, intensive industries. Okay. The report of 33rd Standing Committee on Defense in indigenization, in indigenization of Defense Production for Public Private Partnership was highly critical for the steps taken by the government to promote indigenization, right. So, we have to develop public private partnership that means we, mu we must cooperate with the private entities for development of defense, uh, defense equipments. High cost and involved lack of assured market, right, lack of assured market. There is less of lack of market linkage or also high cost. Why high cost? Because there is always a project delay. Poor technological transfer by foreign countries. We do not have strong indigenous technology so that foreign, foreign people will be attracted to our goods and productions. Lack of data, assessment of degree of indigenization, uh, uh, indigenization. As of today, no specific system has a place to access the extent or level of indigenization achieved by the defense production entities in the country. So, we should have the uh, actual amount that is for example 30 per 70 percent from Indian company and 30 percent equipments are borrowed that need to be mentioned. Then bureaucratic delay and licensing issues obviously there is issues in bureaucratic, the bureaucratic rate of is also there right Pro providing license and providing their monitoring they are still ease of doing business in defense sector. No ease of doing business in defense sector that is why they are not liberalized. Investment in the defense sector is subject to compliance with the licensing requirements stipulated by the Department of Industrial Permission and Permission. So, we have to, so you have to a particular person have to, you have to um, go through a difficult process if they want to produce so far as defense sector is concerned. What are the measures, what are the measures that to be taken, the boost indigenization of DRDO needs to be given more autonomy to be given, right? More autonomy, more budgetary, budgetary, budgetary power, more people need, need to be employed. We are opening 100% FDI in defense sector. With the defense sector, growing private players, the opportunity would bring revenue as well as competition in the defense PSUs. So, we have to associate the private sector. For example, as in the health sector, we have a strong private sector that competes with the government sector. Similarly, also in defense sector, we need private, sector, private participation, which is very poor. Setting up plant defense industrial corridors. Plant defense industrial cadres that need to be set up. Robust defense, defense diplomacy for which cadre defense diplomats should be created so that new coordination with world can bring new ideas with new innovations. So, defense cadres that need to be promoted, the defense diplomacy, setting up a defense exp export organization to promote export and defense equipments. To promote export and defense equipment at present, we are also our imports has increased from the, from the indi indigenous goods. Right, around 70 percent uh, that is required in the army are uh, even bought uh, from the defense sector itself. So, it is gradually increasing. Still, we have a lot of distance to be to go. Instituting an independent audit addressing the issues of inefficiency and accountability, this shall help in keeping the flow of ideas in innovation. Setting up aerospace university can help in bringing new ideas and innovation. Aerospace university that will help in exploring of the space areas. 
so we will discuss the prelim questions arrange the following hills from east to west direction east to west obviously this is garo kashi jayantia here it is garo then kashi then jayantia in the middle east sorry that is in the northeast region of in of india so from west to this is question is from east to west that's why that is 3 to 1 that is jayantia kashi and garo 3 to 1 c c option is the right option Which of the following states are correct regarding Pradhan Mantri Sahaj Vili Harjavala Yojana that is Sobhagya Yojana. It is a concurrent program of Dindwal Upajal Grama Jyoti Yojana. We have already discussed it. Concurrent program to Dindwal Upajal Grama Jyoti Yojana which was promising electrification of villages. But now Sobhagya is focusing on electrification of individual households. The beneficiaries of free electricity connections would be identified using social economic cost census. 2021 data they will be provided they will be given first priority so far as electrification is concerned others can also take the uh, facility but they have to pay 500 in installment they can pay that in installment in 10 installments under sovagyo only public sector discounts are eligible for financial assistance only public sector in uh, discounts no government is proposing prioritizing always private public public private partnership so in every sector so it is wrong only one and two options are right. Great one hundred rhinos found in which of the countries? Nepal, Bhutan, Pakistan, India, all the countries. I have discussed all the countries, all the these countries. How great one hundred rhino rhinos? It was in news because in Kajiranga the number of rhinos has increased. Recently, the project Chunauti was seen in the news what is it related to it is related to e governance project to maintain all rural land records no that is swamitya scheme technology for input provision judicial services to citizens no uh, startup challenge electronic service to companies research on other companies it is a startup challenge project you know the startup challenge see you know the challenge it is linked so you can answer why that that also then last question with reference to lithium ion batteries, consider the following statements. Metallic lithium is used in rechargeable batteries. Metallic lithium is used in, uh, in these rechargeable batteries. Lithium ions move negative electrode to positive electrode during discharge. Yes, from the cathode to the anode. This is wrong. From the cathode to the anode, the uh, uh, lithium ions moves and that recharge the battery. So, option 1 is the right answer. So today lecture is the end, here the lecture end, like this video and share this video and, subs and subscribe to Manik IS, thank you.